next speaker is R R Robert Pereira. Hi, that's Dr. Wall. <clears throat> Am I audible and is my screen visible? Yeah, your audio is, is low, but you are audible. All right, all right. I'll speak a little bit louder. Okay. All right, let's kick it. Uh, a warm good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto Pereira, a PhD student working for the program of Dr. Agarwal. Uh, my research involves projects for the integration of machine learning algorithms, thanks to Dr. Busetti's advice, along with the fields of solid mechanics, material science, and space structures. Uh, today, I'll be presenting our uh, most recent work, which is currently under review process uh, for the Computational Material Science Journal. In this work, we developed an autonomous machine learning framework for the characterization of microstructural defects such as pores, uh, particles, and grain boundaries in additively manufactured metals. Uh, so as you all know, additively manufacturers uh, have increasingly become uh, popular in the past decades. Uh, they, they have found applications in aerospace rocket components, uh, automotive parts, biomedical equipment, and infrastructure components. Uh, these materials, however, they exhibit uh, heterogeneous microstructures uh, involving defects due to the additive manufacturing process itself, which affect their overall material properties and behavior. Uh, also, some of the most widely used conventional methods to characterize these microstructures are, for example, the WCBD method, which is used for extraction of pores, and you also have um, the PSILM method, which is used to extract uh, grain boundary size distribution. Uh, some of the drawbacks of these methods are that they can only be applied to one type of defect separately, which is not autonomous and requires prior user, user information. Uh, they're also time consuming and computationally expensive, so it's important to develop uh, new computationally efficient techniques that may autonomously characterize these features uh, uh, rapidly with less computational requirements. <clears throat> so this brings us to the presented work here where we integrate various machine learning algorithms to extract these features in an autonomous fashion, uh, faster as well as more computationally efficient in some cases. So this figure here shows the main architecture of the developed machine learning framework, uh, where the first machine learning algorithm implemented as seen here is a classifier convolutional neural network. Uh, this network can take uh, a given initial microstructural image and classify the type of defects that are present. Uh, and this is very important in order to establish autonomy, where given a data collection of various types of microstructural defects, no prior information is needed by the user. Uh, and then as you can see, depending on the uh, type of defect that the network recognizes, uh, for pores or particles, it'll take this top path, and for green boundaries, it'll take this bottom path here. Uh, so first I'll look at and I'll explain the characterization process for pores or particles. Uh, as mentioned in the previous slide, let's say that the given initial image is that of a pore or a particle. Uh, then the first step is to uh, pass it through the classifier and uh, convolutional neural network. Um, and then it, once it recognizes it's a pore or a particle, it'll take the top path here. Uh, the second machine learning network implemented is an optimized convolutional encoder decoder network, which we call the simple unit. Uh, shown here, this encoder decoder network is used to obtain um, binary segmentations. Uh, of the pores or the particles. And these segmentations describe the locations of the defects using black pixels and the surrounding space as white pixels. Um, finally, these binary segmentations are inputted into an object detection machine learning network called the YOLO V5, uh, which outputs the final location and the size of each defect in the form of enclosing bounding boxes. All right, so in order to develop this binary segmentation network, the simple unit, uh, the encoder-decoder network that was used as a starting point was the uh, conventional unit. Uh, the unit is widely used in real-time segmentation applications of self-driving vehicles, as well as medical and biomedical x-ray image segmentation. Uh, anyway, since the unit has such uh, a long and complex architecture, uh, this causes time-consuming training times and a lot of computational GPU requirements. So to fix this, we got the conventional unit and optimized its architecture for our work by removing four convolution layers, four transpose convolution layer, as well as a fully connected feedforward layer in the middle of the network. And as shown in the result below, we were able to decrease the required training time by more than one hour and the GPU usage to almost one-fourth of the original unit's network. 
Um, so these are some of the results obtained. Uh, on the left here, you can see the binary segmentations uh, from the simple unit uh, on the validation set and compared to the standard uh, WCVD method, which uh, qualitatively you can see that they are nearly identical to each other. Um, and also on the right, we can see the output from a completely different set of materials than what the network was trained on. And we did this test in order to confirm that overfitting was not happening. Uh, moving on, here we show the main idea of the object detection network uh, used, the YOLO v5. Uh, so YOLO v5 does not stand for you only live once. In this case, it's actually short for you only look once. Uh, basically, this machine learning algorithm takes in a given image and it extracts the location and size of each object in the form of enclosing bounding boxes. Uh, and it's very popular in real-time object detection applications uh, as, show, as, as shown in these uh, animations. Uh, so finally, these are some of the results from the YOLO v5 network. You can see the outputted bounding boxes in the left. Uh, the framework's bounding boxes are shown as purple boxes and the conventional WCBD method as green boxes. Uh, an interesting observation you can make right away is that the uh, framework is able to capture each individual defect while the conventional WCBD method fails to capture, uh, for example, uh, you can see these two pores, uh, they're captured by one single uh, green uh, box and even more obvious here in the bottom, these uh, large uh, two particles are captured by one uh, huge uh, green box. Um, anyways, this concludes the characterization process of pores and particles. And I will move on now to the characterization process for green boundaries. So similarly, now the framework is fed a uh, microstructure of green boundaries instead. Uh, once the classifier network recognizes the microstructure as a grain, it takes a different path uh, here as shown in the bottom. Uh, the first machine learning network for the extraction of grains is another optimized convolution and quarter decoder network, which we call the dense unit. Uh, this time, however, uh, instead of generating binary segmentations, we generate RGB or red, green, blue segmentations. Uh, the purpose for this approach is that portion particles are usually nicely dispersed throughout the microstructure, allowing us the use for YOLO v5 network to obtain individual bounding boxes. Uh, but uh, grains are not, uh, don't, don't have this characteristic. They are usually continuous throughout the microstructure, which would result in a lot of overlapping boxes. Uh, therefore, the RGB segmentations give us uh, the size distribution of the grains uh, described by the color variation gradients uh, as shown here where darker red regions describe larger size grains and darker blue regions describe smaller size grains. Um, finally, the last machine uh, learning network used for grain boundary extraction are two regression convolutional neural networks where given the RGB segmentations, they are used to predict the histograms for the grain size distribution. So moving on in a similar fashion, uh, the convolution and coder decoder network used for RGB segmentation, which we call the dense unit, uh, in order to obtain this network, uh, we made use of the Deep Emulator Network Search or the DENS algorithm, which was published in 2020 by NASA for optimization of machine learning networks architecture. Uh, it uses the evolution theory algorithm uh, called Covariance Matrix Adaptation Evolution Strategy or CMAES uh, to rapidly generate a search based on parameters uh, to optimize a given network. Uh, so in other words, we, since the simple unit was developed explicitly for binary segmentations, we needed a slightly more complex network uh, to obtain accurate RGB segmentations of grain boundaries. Uh, therefore, we use the simple unit as a starting point and we optimize its architecture with respect to the filter size and padding size as shown here. And we kept the number of channels and stripe uh, the same as the simple unit. Uh, so these are some of the RGB segmentations obtained from a different uh, set of images than the ones used in the validation set or the training set. Uh, and again, we did this to verify that overfitting was not happening. And as you can see, this qualitative analysis shows a uh, good result from the dense unit. And as you can observe closely, in some cases, it's even able to capture some of the larger size grains, uh, as well as the grains at the edges of the microstructure more accurately, uh, as shown in these results. Uh, finally, this is the architecture used for the two additional convolutional neural networks. And the output result is briefly shown at the bottom right. Um, and we compared it to the standard PSILM methods output. And you can make an interesting observation uh, that although the predictions are very close to each other, uh, the histograms output by the machine learning framework is slightly higher than the one obtained by the standard method. And I, if I have some time, I can explain this at the end. And finally, I will just show you some concluding results from the framework's uh, performance. 
as well as a comparison to the standard uh, PSI alignment method. Um, so in this st step, we wanted to compare the time that it takes to analyze 10 microstructure images uh, by the standard method uh, against our developed framework. And uh, you can see from the graph below, the significant time improvement of uh, more than 10 minutes, even by using only CPU power instead of GPU power. Um, uh, it's important to mention that we did not include the required training time of 55 minutes from the dense unit in this analysis, because the good thing about machine learning networks is that once a network is trained, you can simply save the train parameters and then just call them uh, in later use. Uh, but in any case, uh, to include this time discrepancy, uh, we did an additional test. Uh, oops, sorry. So let's say that we do need to train the network. Uh, then the question is, what would be the number of images to be analyzed or the threshold where both the standard PSI and method and our framework require approximately the same amount of time? And we found uh, through the test that this number is actually 36 uh, images. Basically what this means is that uh, for the analysis of roughly 36 images, the PSI LM method would take the same amount of time as it would take us to train the machine learning framework and then use it in the same analysis. Uh, but however, imagine that you need to extract information from 100 or even 1,000 images, which is most common, uh, then it is more clear that the framework will be significantly faster in performance than the conventional method. And you can even imagine it will be even, even faster if it's already trained. Um, and lastly, I included this image again at the top, uh, just to show that um, our framework may outperform the standard method in some cases. You can see this uh, microstructure, this should be a huge grain, then you have uh, each distinct grain nicely, uh, nicely separated. Uh, however, the PSI and method, it does not capture this, and you can see the framework captured this very nicely. And uh, lastly, I included this slide for reference. I've already explained most of this. Um, but uh, basically, this uh, includes the training time uh, that we reduce from the conventional methods, the unit and the rest unit, to the simple unit and dense unit. Um, we re also reduce the GPU usage, and you can see the results here. And uh, even more insightful one will be the accuracy. We did this while also maintaining a relatively close accuracy to the conventional methods. Uh, anyways, these are my references. Um, Thank you so much for uh, staying tuned, listening to my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.